Gene with the genome field? Uh, yeah. All right. Day one, week one. Um, so again, no computers except for this particular time. Not really the best enforcement of my rule, but this, this particular time is going to be setting up your computer for the entire duration of this course. Um, again, this is the Google Calendar that I shared with everybody. It has literally every event, every TA that we're gonna have, every speaker that we're gonna have. Uh, we still are hearing back from some industry professionals about like when they're gonna be coming in. But you can kind of see like these are all different people who are going to be coming in to TA each day. They're going to be the same people. So today you're going to meet George Wambold. Uh, I used to work with him at my previous company. And then Ricardo Flurry is going to be coming in. With Jake Fishbane, Rick Cathy, and all these different people are going to be coming in. There is a person named Mark Cooper who I, I didn't get to meet, but he'll be coming in from 11 to 1 on Saturdays to help you out whenever you need anything. Tomorrow morning, we're going to have uh, Echo Platoon come visit. It's actually just going to be one person. It's going to be his name is Daniel Talon um, because Ray, Ray Armada Aranda is going to be uh, starting tomorrow. Otherwise, he would join him as well. So tomorrow we're going to have one person uh, coming in just to you know, talk to you about their experience and you know, uh, any questions you may have and things like that. This Google Calendar, everyone should have access to. Um, get very used to this one. Again, if you ask me questions about things that are showing up on the calendar, I will be curious. Um, and I'll just point you to the calendar. Everyone also should have received an invite to the Foxtrot Platoon um, organization on GitHub. This is something that you should have access to. This has literally every challenge, not every assessment, but every single challenge, the curriculum, and basically all of your code is going to live over here. We're gonna talk more about GitHub, Git and GitHub tomorrow, but this is, you should probably bookmark this page and definitely bookmark this particular page, the curriculum. Now, just to kind of give some background information on how this curriculum is going to work, I've broken it down literally every single, uh, basically every single week, uh, except for obviously week 10, we're going to be off. That's going to be July 4th. The entire week of July 4th, we're going to be off um, for you to do your individual capstone projects. Week one, broken down by days, the topics that we're going to cover, all the resources, all the different links that you're going to need, and any lecture materials that I, I may go over. Again, every single lecture that I, I do is going to be recorded and then posted up to YouTube. I'm starting to record this right now, actually. So today, what we're going to be doing is complete chaos for the next two hours. I'm hoping to finish this by 1230. We should definitely be finished if, um, if you guys all downloaded everything that I asked you to do. But we're going to set up our computers today. We're going to talk about the IDE, the Integrated Development Environment. We're going to talk about Unix commands, a command line, and we're going to talk about the, the introduction to Sublime Text, which is a text editor that we're going to be using for this particular thing. We have three challenges for today. Terminal challenges, 99 bottles, and deaf grandma in JavaScript. We're going to be learning two different languages. We're going to be learning JavaScript and Ruby at the exact same time. Now, there's other boot camps that teach one language, and that's fine. What we found works for our, like, what, what we found to be successful is teaching two different languages uh, because once you get married to one thing, you might not ever want to move. That happened to me uh, a while back. I learned Ruby, all my jobs were in Ruby. I had no idea how to write anything else. Um, and we want to avoid that happening to you. So we're gonna be teaching JavaScript and Ruby at the same time. The chances of you working in JavaScript are fairly high. Um, the chances of you working in Ruby with, these in, with the internships that we have is fairly high. Um, but it's just good to know two things. It's very, it's, 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 it'll, it won't be terrible. So we're gonna set up our computers, and I just kinda wanna ask, did everyone download Xcode ahead of time? Everyone? Everyone, you're, you're all set actually. Your computers are completely set. You don't have to, uh, you don't actually have to do anything. So downloaded Xcode, and you downloaded the most recent version of uh, OS X? Okay, cool, let's find out. Um, so. We're gonna do computers up for this particular point, and we're just gonna run down this list one by one. For the students that are here in Chicago, um, if you need a, uh, like a transit card, we don't have them, but um, for one thing, don't use the $3 like one-time use things. You can actually get a card at like a Walgreens for five bucks, and then I think they load five bucks worth of transit onto your card as well, so it's, it's, it's no-cost card. Um, and then you can reuse that over and over. 
if you have um, like a military ID and proof of 10% or more um, disability, you can actually go to the CTA office, the Chicago Transit Authority office, which is not too far from here, apply for a like a military like waiver, and then they'll give you a free, I think it's a free monthly pass or something like that. So saves you hundred bucks a month. Cool. So let's get started. Computer's up the first time. Um, we'll check a few things. So first things, um, the way that you talk with like the Mac ecosystem and the way that you're going to be able to download anything from the app store is going to be using, um, use, using an Apple ID. So everyone should have one. Uh, again, for uh, you're all set. <laughs> yeah, you're completely set on everything here. Uh, you should have Xcode downloaded. And the way that I can tell that, that you have Xcode downloaded is just go, just go to the search bar in the top right hand corner, just type in Xcode and something should pop up. If something doesn't pop up, do start downloading right away. So again, top right hand corner, the little spotlight, look for Xcode. Now, basically what Xcode is, every single Mac machine has the ability, is like when they, when they purchase and they make, when you purchase and make a Mac machine, 99% of the world does not use Macs for development purposes. So they don't need all of the stuff. Um, they don't need to ship with Xcode already, uh, already put in. What, what Xcode does, it says, it basically tells Apple that your machine, you're going to make into a development machine. It, it, it basically installs all of these extra tools that you're going to need in order to start writing web, uh, web apps and to start being a developer on your particular machine. Xcode, you're not gonna be writing anything in Xcode, just Xcode brings in a whole bunch of tools for you to use. So you wanna make sure you have this because this is I think like three gigs. So if you didn't download it, start downloading it right now. Also, I want everyone to check and we're gonna have Alex and Josh kind of peruse the room and help out if you, if you need. Um, this is gonna be a complete chaotic environment for the next hour and a half. I want to make sure that everyone has at least 10.12 when you do to click on the top left, hit the Apple and hit about this map. At least 10.12. Does anybody not have Xcode? Or does anybody not have 10.12? Fantastic, looking good. Jackie and uh, John, you guys good? All right. Next things, we're gonna download Slack. Slack is for basically all communication purposes. So you can, you can email me, I'm gonna tell you to Slack me uh, because that's the thing I can check most frequently on my phone and I can, I can get back to you in case you need to. Now, you can download it through the App Store or you can download it directly from the Slack uh, download here. Now there are two ways, there's, there's a couple things. The App Store, let's just open it up. The App Store is a place that you can buy all different types of software. Okay, so you, we used to, like, if you were like me, you used to go to Best Buy or like uh, PC Richard or whatever, or, or the Compact Store, and you used, you used to buy CDs, and you used to put it inside of your machine, and then you install it on your machine. Nobody does that anymore, obviously. I don't, we, most people's computers don't even, don't even have a CD drive. So what, when you download, uh, software these days it's usually from a like a licensed distributor like the App Store on on both your Mac and on your like iPhones or you know uh, or from the Android Store Google Play something like that what the App Store does is it allows you to download all of your software and it also manages all your versions of your software meaning that if anything ever gets updated you don't have to go back to the website and say download this download this download this the app store actually keeps track of every single version and it lets you know if anything is out of date so again, you can download it through the App Store, uh, Slack, but I would actually recommend downloading it directly from Slack for Mac over here on this particular download link located here on the second bullet point. And the reason, it kind of goes against what I just said because if the Mac Store manages all of your versions for you, why would you want to download it directly? The App Store one doesn't allow you to do screen sharing. So that's really, really important. So you're gonna have to just unfortunately download and keep track of it here from the, here from, here. Make sure you download it on your desktop and don't use it in the browser. So I'm seeing most people have that. Um, download it for your phone. Make sure everything is like you set all notifications to everything because that's the way that we're going to communicate with you. Um, this doesn't apply to anybody here um, because I see remotes already all set up, but I would download a, like a software called Zoom. So Zoom is basically Skype 
8.0, like because Skype sucks. Um, so Zoom is what we're going to be using to for all remote and all recording for now. If this if this doesn't work, we we've used Google Hangout in the past, and that uh, has also worked fairly well. If you want to just download it, just to make sure you have it. Let's say you get sick one day because Chicago the temperatures drop and rise pretty rapidly. Um, let's say you get sick one day, John not gonna be able to make it to class. No problem, just call in and then you're good to go. You can find that link every single day. It, the link that we're gonna use for the classroom, there's a fixed room, it's gonna be Zoom, it's located here at the top of Foxtrot. Speaking of Slack, I wanted to talk about like how to use Slack and what to be wary of. All right, so for you all, there are many different public channels. Public channels are things that anybody can join and they don't have a little lock symbol on the left-hand side. Anything with a hashtag is an open channel. So Foxtrot Platoon has, you can see has 32 people. It's everybody in this room, all the TAs, all the mentors, and anybody who's getting involved with, the sh with, with the, your particular cohort. Be careful what you say here, because it's not, it, it is going beyond us. Like it's not just the people here in this room. Like, we'll, like inside of this room will be a little bit more forgiving, but if somebody sees something that they, they don't appreciate, if they see something that they don't like or if there's something that they don't appreciate, um, it, it lives forever inside of this public channel. The private channel, this Fox Trots over here, is just you know Code Platoon staff and your fellow classmates. You can feel free to a certain degree of uh, what whatever you want to put in here, you can put in here. Other people won't see it. The TAs won't see it. The mentors won't see it. Hiring people won't see it. And then inside of general, all the alumni, everyone involved with CoPlatoon at all times is going to be lo located inside of here. Uh, next thing, I want you all to sign up for Operation Code. Operation Code is a national organization that helps, you know, like military service members and veterans get inside of technology. So join Operation Code. They have a Slack channel. They can they post a whole bunch of uh, like job postings and things like that. Just say, hey, I'm learning. I'm interested in learning more. Like, anybody want to help me out? And it's a very vibrant community. A lot of people like to help out others. So just make sure that you're joining Operation Code. Tell them you're with Code Two. Mm -hmm. Whether you're a student. Code. All right. So I'll give everyone a little bit of time to do these first four things here. And then we're going to really get get going pretty soon. Uh, so you have that little cable. No, 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 no. I just, you know, I was, I was just checking to see it. Thank you, Beth. Legit, right? I got this standing desk here for for free, and then they didn't have a cable, so I just bought a cable. So essentially, I bought a motorized. Oh, oh boy! Bought a motorized motorized standing desk for seven bucks. Maybe there's a reason why they threw it away. Are we good? All right, let's continue on. All right, first things first, we're gonna download a, a terminal program called iTerm. iTerm, we're gonna talk about this more this afternoon, uh, basically replaces the term, everyone has, uh, I don't know, everyone has a program called terminal on their particular page, on their particular machine. But we're not going to use Terminal, we're going to be using iTerm. This is the way that we're going to be interacting with our computer instead of double clicking, instead of dragging things around, 
the way that we're going to interact with our computer is we're going to execute everything using iTerm. So let's make sure that we go ahead and start downloading that and set that as the default over terminal. Next, we're going to download something called Sublime Text. Again, I'm going to go into much more detail about what this particular, these two particular programs do. But iTerm is essentially a terminal. It, it basically helps you run your code. The place that you type your code is going to be a place uh, is called a text editor. We're going to be using one called Sublime Text. You can also use uh, Atom, which is a free version. Like, it is an open source one. Yep. Oh, okay. so I use uh, VS Code. That's fine. Which also has a Great. Yeah, that sounds good. But I would recommend I'd recommend something that has a GUI interface. GUI stands for Graphical User Interface, something that you can double click, something that you can move your mouse around on. There are terminal-based ones that you can't click on called Vim and Emacs. We're not going to use that for the purposes of our class here. So iTerm for a terminal editor, a term terminal emulator. And then we're going to use Sublime Text to write our code. If you want to use VS Code, it is a popular text editor. Um, you can use that if you'd like. Also, you can use um, Atom. But there are a lot of shortcuts that I only know the shortcuts for Sublime Text and Atom for. Um, your, your choice. Sublime Text is, uh, you do need to purchase it. It is $70. Uh, but it has an unlimited free trial. So you can use it for as long as you want until you can sucker your, um, sucker your boss to pay for it, basically. Um, Atom is free. It's an open source platform, but it is a tiny bit slower than Sublime Text. Your choice, Sublime Text or Atom. Next, we're going to download Node. We're going to download it directly from the node.js.org. This is basically going to, once you install it, it's going to provide you all the benefits of Node. Um, you, you'll be able to run things using Node. You're going to be able to run JavaScript files and things like that. We're going to start using this today. Once you have those three things, or if you have any, any sorts of issues, don't hesitate to let us know. We've got three people here to, to walk you through it. Remote, how are you doing? Good. Jackie, you good? Cool. All right, I'll give a couple minutes to download those few things. And then we're going to get into a whole mess of stuff. John, does the Zoom channel change every day or with every That's meeting, or is that going to stay That's static? The... That's going to remain static. The one that I posted at the, at the very top, right over okay. here, this thing is going to remain the same. OK. Another couple minutes, and at 11 o'clock, I will go over this enormous install fest, which is where I'm sure where people are going to start asking for help. What's that? All right. Seems like most people are doing okay. So we're going to get started on this Code Platoon install fest. Again, the purpose of this particular bit of time, it'll probably take about an hour, is just to get your machine set up for the rest of the cohort. You're not going to understand half of what I'm about to say, um, and that's totally okay. Like, well, we're just going to make sure that all of your stuff is set up correctly so that you, we don't have to worry about it over and over again. All right, so number one, we're going to install, we're going to create a sim link, which is basically when I type something, something else happens. It's an alias. Like, it's like saying, if 2x equals 4, then x equals 2, then I can always use that, that variable. So I'm going to use a sim, I'm going to create a sim link. 
so that whenever I type subtle inside of my command line, so let's say, let's, I'll kind of show you what I mean. So I'm here on the desktop, maybe I want to open up the curriculum. Uh, I could either, you know, drag and drop and all that, all that kind of stuff, or I can just do subl, and then it opens up that particular bit of curriculum right here um, using Sublime. So it's a small little shortcut. We're gonna install that right now. So inside of your iTerm, I'm just gonna ask you to go copy this particular line, copy it, and then just paste. That's all. Just copy and paste it directly inside of your terminal. If you're able to go subl and just press enter and then it opens up in Sublime, then you're all set to go. I'm gonna have uh, Josh and uh, Alex kind of like roam around, just make sure everything is good. Good. I use Adam, so it's okay. Adam instead of Sublime. Cool. All the shortcuts are exactly the same. So yeah, that's what I was wondering because it's the exact same syntax. Yeah, exact same thing. <laughs> so don't try not to go ahead, crap map. Yeah, just put it inside of your terminal. That's week one. Day one. Being so fast. Did that work? So again, yeah. So again, for everybody, just go ahead. And go to curriculum. Week one, the first day, complete and solve fest. And we're just on number one. We're just on subble. So go ahead. Four thirty. Are you in week one? I believe so. Yeah, week one. Four thirty. Oh, yeah, gotcha. But it's on top. Complete and solve fest. Again, what all you're doing is you're just copying that line for the sim link for number one and pasting it inside of your. Uh, you, if you see a permission denied, does anyone know how to like get around that? Pseudo. Pseudo. What does pseudo stand for? Super user delegated. So just press up or press command. Uh, yeah. No, I'm sorry. Delete it. I just don't know what it is. Run on my tracker. And then get on to uh, oh, yeah. your, uh, so there's no your iTunes. I my computer is uh, press back. Uh, delete. Delete. So I was. Um, so let's start and then scroll down to press command A. Go back to the GitHub logo. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just cross it. So I press you. Yep. And uh, space. I'll look at iTunes. Uh, the password you used up on your computer. Okay. Yeah, so that's the station. It won't show up. Just delete it. Okay. Yeah. 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 Let's see. Don't make all first thing. Space. Oh no, that's what I was going to do. Oh, okay. So you're going to do pseudo. Pseudo, and then I know what it is. Real quick, I want to point out something. So again, just to kind of revise what revisit what we've done so far, we've gotten an Xcode, we've gotten Slack. We've downloaded Zoom and Operation Code and Sublime and iTerm. You're going to need to put it inside of your Applications folder. So you, wherever you downloaded and you installed it, you have to drag that and put it inside your Applications. The Applications is located at basically your user's home directory, so that whenever, so whenever you load it, it's like it's always going to be in the exact same location. Like this is like this is basically the the C drive, you can think of it as on, on a Windows machine. So make sure you have iTerm and Sublime Text inside of your applications when you download it. So wherever you install it, just drag that whole that, drag that whole thing and dump it inside of here. I don't have any invitations. John, how do I get around that uh, permission denied? Um, one second, John. You don't have it. What is your user? I think I invited everyone. 
So I have you right here. And I have you right there. You're just going to go to github.com slash foxtrot platoon. And then I think you can accept it. And John, the answer is type in sudo at the beginning of that line and then enter. All right. So, OK. And then that it's going to prompt you for a password. You're going to type in the password you use to log into your machine when it goes to sleep. It won't show up, but it is capturing your words, and then you press enter. So we're still on number one. Uh, I just downloaded it. I have it. Okay. When you see like this down, that's the triangle. So when you see this dollar sign, mm -hmm. that just means like the, if you go back to your terminal, you'll see that that's the beginning of the jet pump for your entry test. Got it. Version mm -hmm. nine. So, uh, you see what? Okay. Um, where is what? Make sure you are super easy. Just and then after that, type in what you write. So, sudo, and then you can see what we're about. You can download it. Yeah. 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 Good. Put in your password. Mm -hmm. Just press the uh, uh, right password that you can use for the computer. Oh. Um, right arrow. Mm -hmm. Why isn't it? Why isn't it showing up? It's not going to show up just because it's hidden. Um, I think so. Um, just do several. Yes. Um, go to iTunes. Bottom of the Okay. you have the So Yeah. Cool. All right, so I'm going to leave. I know who said, who said, what about you guys? You guys where, where is the, uh, just so you know, you know, you can scroll. It's an input. It okay. bounce back in here. So, so, so yeah, you can just type in, back um, to the so so yeah, find that, uh, or Adam, or Adam, or Adam yeah, for space period. So, you make sure that it's, yeah. yeah. So, so, you do yeah. Adam and a space and then, uh, Jackie, John, you good? No, I'm not having any luck with the sudo. You're not having any luck. Give me any prompt to enter my password in there. Excuse me. Uh, it says you should sudo dash a dash k dash k dash b. Uh, so did you have sudo space and the other thing? Sudo space and then the. Uh, that's us. Well, that's what the test one is. Let's try to reload it here real quick. Sure. And if that doesn't work, you and I can work uh, after I give this next uh, this next instruction. I don't. I didn't type. All right. Real quick. Um, again, you're starting to understand the franticness of trying to make make sure you keep up with me at all times. Uh, it's okay. You're going to be overwhelmed during this period of time. You're not going to understand half the things I'm saying. Um, but we're just, uh, again, all we're doing is just setting up our machines. Um, we're going to walk through each step with you. And if you're not caught up, one of the people around you can probably help you, or we have three people who can help you as well. But I'm going to move on to number two. And we're going to talk about, uh, number three, actually. We're going to talk about homebrew. Now, homebrew is basically known as the missing package manager for Mac OS. So, Mac OS ships with a whole bunch of software, but most of it is out of date. Most of it is not really used, like, used that often. Like you have old Ruby, you have old 
Postgres, you have old everything. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna download something called Homebrew. So first thing we're gonna type in is called Witch Brew. If you have something like this show up right afterwards, then you're all set, you're good to go. If you don't see it, then you're gonna run this particular line. Now basically, just like the Mac App Store downloads a whole bunch of things like, you know, WeChat and Pages and iMovie and all that kind of stuff, and it manages all the versions for you, all the software that you need in order to run your particular code uh, and to run your machine, you're gonna be using through Brew. So Homebrew is gonna manage all of your versions of Ruby, all your versions of you know, Python, or I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure Python works on here. Um, but yeah, it will manage everything inside of there. So just run these two particular lines. If you can run which Brew and this shows up, you're good. If it doesn't, run this particular line. Two things, first thing is you can also use Cast to do things that and then you can also install Node. Yes, you can. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the um, I'm gonna go with just downloading it directly from here. We're gonna use Homebrew for this one. So again, you should just be doing Subble and Homebrew to get started. I guess that was your fun. You good? I uh, Subble. Yeah, it uh, pops up. This is a long time. You good? All right, so nothing showed up, right? Right. So what does it ask you to do? Can you be not doing something right now? That's your question for me. So we have a student or somebody looking to apply EDP 14 question, asking the number one or number four? Number one. All right, John, tell me what's going on with you. Um, let's see. I'm, put, I'm trying. I'm not sure if I got that. Uh, the um, the subtle. So if, if anyone's having issue with the link, or not, I'm just home right now. No, I shouldn't have to do that. That's why. If you download the most recent one, it's not Sublime Text 2, is it? Is it? Did you click the link for the Sublime Text? No. No. John, can you share your screen with me? Yeah, it looks like it's installing now. Okay, cool. Um, Jackie, you good? Um. <coughs> I'm not seeing, it's not showing up anything on, on mine. I don't know if I have to reinstall Sublime or something like that. <clears throat> when you when you click on the Finder like this and hit Applications, is iTerm and Sublime Text located inside your Applications folder? Um, yeah, I moved that over. And when you type in subble inside of your um, inside of here, does anything show up like the, like another window? This one just popped up for me. No, it says command not found. Okay, did you copy this first line right here? Um, yeah, it still says command not found. This one. All right, so go ahead, copy this. Actually, can you share your screen? Um. Yeah. um it says you can't share a uh, screen while other participant is sharing. Um, okay. Let's do this. Um, why don't you give me a call on Slack in just a little bit and we'll, we'll get you all set up. For okay. everybody else, we're going to continue on uh, right over here. We're just going to run Brew Update. Brew Update basically says like, all the old outdated software that's like that's not like fully up to date, you're just gonna have homebrew update all of it for you. And then we're gonna run brew doctor. So again, these two things, brew update and then brew doctor. Any sign that you see this dollar sign, it means it's a command prompt. If you take a look inside of your iTerm right here, there's a little dollar sign. There's a little dollar sign here. It just means that like, oh, just put it at your command prompt. So brew update and then brew doctor. And then make sure if the person next to you doesn't have all everything set up, you should work with them. 
Uh, all right, Jack. Jackie, let's go with you. Yeah. That's right, so John. Do you want to give me a call? So I'm going to get you. Uh, yeah, I, got, I, think I, I think I got everything. Uh, I've got all the. Uh, I put in Brew update uh, updates already up to date, and then Brew Docker gives me a lot of different files. But cool. uh, sweet, sounds good. I think it should be okay. Find them. Okay. All right, for everyone else. We're going to move on to the next step. We're going to adjust our path for homebrew so that all the software that we use is 
make it, we make sure that homebrew is reading all the correct software in the right path um, so that when we run it, it there's no issues so first things first i'm just going to have you copy this particular line up here this echo path pipe tr space colon and then the backslash n so when i run this i see a whole bunch of stuff because i'm i my computer is just a giant mess but the main thing that i want to make i want to see is that user local bin comes before user bin and then that comes before bin so for me user local bin comes before user bin which comes before bin as long as it's in this particular order you should be pretty good to go if not you're going to need to um, open what's called a bash profile which basically means every single time that i so when i load up my my terminal because i live here so often i have different colors and I have, you know, uh, it tells me what branch I'm on, if I'm on a Git branch and things like that. Other people's ones are kind of black and white. We're gonna start building our, our bash profiles little by little so that whenever we, whenever we load up an iTerm shell like this, it'll load up all of our preferences at the same time. So who, when, when people run echo path pipe tr colon backslash n, who does not see local, user local bin coming before user bin, which comes before bin? So just run that piece, that particular line of code and make sure that user local bin comes before user bin and slash bin. If it doesn't happen, just let us know and we'll, we'll help you out. I see a lot of blank faces. I'm pretty sure no one's, no one's actually doing these things. You good? Okay. Yes. You good? Mark? John? Michael? Yes. Cool. All right. In that case, good. in that case, remote, I'll, I'll catch up with you in just a second. You can start going through each one of these installations. Alex and Josh are gonna be kind of walking around just to make sure everything's going well. But we're installing software that we're going to be using inside of our development. First things first, we're gonna install SQL Lite 3. SQL stands for Structured Query Language. It's the way that you talk with the database. SQL Lite 3 is just one version of that database. It's kind of like there are many, like a car is what you use to drive around, but there are many flavors of cars. There's sedans and coupes and SUVs and things like that. Similarly here, um, you can, you're going to be installing a whole bunch of software. SQL Lite first, and then we're going to use Postgres, which is another, um, another SQL adapter. All, this one's pretty simple. Just go ahead and copy and paste all of these lines right after the... Uh, uh, with the dollar signs and if something blows up and you'll see you'll see it blow up because it won't return properly um, Just let us know Make sure and then to verify that you've done everything correctly. You're going to type in which Postgres make sure it looks like this which uh, P SQL and it should look like that And then you're going to run PS aux pipe grep Postgres if anything shows up on the screen you're good to go and then finally, do this this bit of code here on the bottom. Let's go jump back over to remote. Um, so, John, you were up. What's going on? I'm good. The uh, the SQLite three went in okay. Okay. So I'll try the uh, Postgres now. Great. Jack, are you good? I don't hear anything. I'm assuming everyone's good. Um, oh. I'm still doing the brew, the okay. brew one. Okay. Um, Are you still is that still in the sublime, or the? Oh, no. You take this and you're going to dump this. You're going to take this and then dump it inside of a terminal, iterm. The iterm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so basically, I'm just putting like a bunch of. A bunch of those lines in there. Mm -hmm. I think it was saying that. Um, okay, so it says it's downloading command line tools for Xcode and installing yep. so, that. So that when I asked if, if people had downloaded Xcode, that's why. Yeah, I mean, I because really Homebrew requires so Xcode. And it's going to just, um, this might take like an hour at this point to download those things. So you might. You might need to just come back and watch this later, or we can work together a little bit later. Uh, this one? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So once I do this, because I tried before, so I did the first one, and the last one, I thought I was talking about the local, so I'm glad this. 
صحبت دیگه دارم خیلی ممنون Can I make this a little bigger? Yes, so let's make this a uh, let's see what the commission goes for and why it's not going to be You can kick yeah, them out. Like you you can kick them out. As long as any of them is. Oh, no, all right. Yeah, it doesn't have to be all of them. As long as any of them are running, I just have to all the hydrogen, but it looks like you're good. Okay. Yeah, you can make this first hydrogen. Still copying. Yeah. I uh I gotta remove some things from having my Yeah. Yeah. The next one was super Yeah. Yeah. And post press. Who is not caught up? I'll be shot. I'm still working. Okay. Also, if I were you, um, you're never going to use caps lock again. You might want to remap caps lock as command. Um, just to make it a little bit easier for yourself. Because turning like this, it seems to be very trivial, but turning your wrist like this for a million times a day is actually might give you arthritis <laughs> or carpal tunnel. Um, so the way that you do that, just go to keyboard. Go to keyboard, go to modifier keys, Apple keyboard right over here, or like internal keyboard trackpad, and then just remap caps lock as command. So you can reach over with your pinky rather than the, the turning of your wrist. You're never going to use caps lock ever again. Uh, <laughs> will, the, will the default command button still work? Yes. Okay. Yeah, everything else will work. You're just remapping one key. OK. Continuing on, we're about halfway through the, the installation. We are going to install Ruby on our computer now. Again, James, you're all set for everything. Um, so on this next step, we're going to be using, there's different version managers. So you can kind of see like Mac App Store manages all your versions. Homebrew manages all your versions of things. There's a piece of software called root like a, there's version managers for ruby as well because you can switch between like 2.5 and 2.4 and 2.3 uh, very easily so we're going to be using rbnb for our class this stands for ruby environment rvm is ruby version manager ch ruby is another uh, version manager as well so first thing we're going to run is brew install rbnb to install rbnb pretty simple and then we're going to do rbnb init uh, inside of our shell Something happened when I did it. Okay. It was okay. Think it's not right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. 
you did balloon stalls, this was okay? Mm -hmm. This was not? Yeah, I'm not gonna use that chart, I just did this with chart. I would do that now. Actually, the fish shell I'm not too familiar with, so I can't. I, I, I use hash. So. Again, we're installing Ruby at this particular point. We're going to be using R, B, and B for our home brew. So first things first, brew install RBNB. Homebrew is going to install a version manager for Ruby. It's kind of weird. It's like the Mac OS store manages a whole bunch of versions. Homebrew manages a bunch of versions. And then RBNB is going to manage a whole bunch of versions. The whole idea is the less that you have to manage yourself, the better off you are. So we're going to do brew install RBNB. We're going to initialize it inside of our shell, but we want to initialize it every single time. So we're going to run subble bash profile. Again, bash profile is that profile that we set up so that every single time that we, whenever we open a new terminal, all of our preferences are already loaded in. And when Sublime opens, you're going to add this particular line of code, close it, and then reload it. So you're going to do source bash profile and all that stuff is going to go through. And then just kind of run through each one of these, uh, these things over here under usage. John, you good? Yeah, I'm up to um, the subtle dot bash underscore profile. This uh, one. This one here. <clears throat> yeah. So I got the RBNB. The knit is done. So subtle bash profiles next then. Uh, Jackie. Anything, anything wrong? Um, and yeah, the Ruby, <clears throat> the Ruby part looks fine, but <clears throat> excuse me, the um, the bit before that, I kind of had to pass over. I wasn't seeing that part working for me. The um, SQL light and Postgres and the Echo Path part. I didn't right. see, get that part, but um, the Ruby part's going. All right, let's go with, with you two specifically. Let's talk a little bit more during lunch and I'll just kind of control your computers, make sure everything's set up. Because okay. there's nothing worse than being stuck with a broken machine remotely. So I'll work yeah. with you. Okay, thank you. Again, for folks in class, run through run through all of these lines of code. So anything with this light dark gray background, you want to run through. And pause right when you get to this particular point, which says verify your Ruby manager. Um, Okay. 
I'm gonna try that on Jupiter. Yeah, you can use the map. Sorry. Josh, I just sent it to Michael Dorsey's uh, slide. Yeah. All right. If you've gotten to that point, and again, people are going to be at different points. So if you're really far behind, just let us know. Um, basically, we're just going to continue running through. So this is very important, and I don't want anyone to move forward until we get to this point. I want you to type in which Airbnb, and I should see either this show up or this show up. If it does not say that, let me know. But I think it should because you're using Homebrew, and Homebrew is in your path. Good? Yeah. All right. This next section, just type in which space Ruby, and it should say, it should have RBNV in the Ruby. If it's not there, then we're in a bad space. <laughs> you don't have that? No. Does it say this thing? It does. I am there. Yeah. Open your bash profile. Subble. Space. Uh, oh, uh, that's not the uh, type of source. I mean, yeah, for that, I have space. So, I'm going to do this. Uh, tilde, strictly on. Up left hand corner. Forward slash. Dot dash. Underscore. No. Okay. Now, so up up until you do which media. Until I do what? No. So you that as well. So, like, if I do. User bin uh, still has you not had auto on here before. Yeah. So, so I have that. So when you did which R R B N B user These are yours. Hmm. Uh, what's, did what's, you what's go the current version of R B N B? The usage thing. Uh, 
Well, this is my I, teacher here for I, I believe I was kind of going to. Did you do that usage portion right at the bottom of the page? Do you want the teacher right here? Yeah. Um, um, I. Can we get the. Do Ruby Dash Ruby Dash Ruby Dash Ruby Dash Ruby Dash Ruby yeah, we didn't like it. Yeah, sure. so just uh, do RBMB install two books. Okay. That's zero. And then that's just you just have to run this this list for you can do the first one. Oh, you run the first one. Oh, yeah, that's right there. Yeah, but don't don't copy the hash tags. Okay, got it. Just the uh, just the first. <laughs> No, I just need to quickly how to use the search. It's just, it's just my fault. I have the issue that it says we might have, which is user pen. So it's like, okay, and then it says, no, that's not pen right now. Do that first. So these go in, each one. Okay. Everything besides the the hash shell. Okay. But you can't do it all at once. That's like, I don't think. Which I installed this. Does anybody need to try this? Yeah, that's uh, no. Open your cash profile. And if you start noticing I ask you to do certain things over and over and over again, you have to say, like, oh, what's the exact right. command? You might want to create what's called an alias inside the bash profile. Why would I say open your bash profile? What that is good. Uh, no. You got it. Uh, I'm not. I'm putting these commands in, nothing happens. Looks like it's still working. Still working? Okay. Still working. Okay. Still working. Okay. 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 Got it. I just I tried that before and it decided it didn't do it. It doesn't work at all. It has to be a top Okay. No. Don't move. Go. I just said it. So you added something to your bash profile. Um, Yeah. 
John, Jackie, sorry about that. You guys good? Anybody stuck? I'm stuck on the home bash profile. Uh, I get there and I get <clears throat> command not found. Bash profile. Um, um, right there. Yeah, and install RB ENV using Homebrew. Yep. So, so I, this. I, I did, did the, I did the install. I did, I did the initialize mm -hmm. the problem there, and then I get down to that next line, the home bash profile. So, and did you, so you type this, right? Yeah, try that, and I get command not found. You entered this. Um, no. Should Sublime open by itself? Yes. It, it didn't. Okay. I can enter it and see what happens. Yep. All right, real quick, just for everyone else, it seems like everyone else is at a fairly decent spot. If you're stuck, we do have Josh and uh, Alex roaming around. We're, once you get to this particular point, we're just going to start installing gems. So gems are basically Ruby libraries. They call them Ruby. They call them gems because Ruby is a gem. So libraries. Libraries are basically thousands of lines of code that someone else wrote to make your life as a developer easier. We're going to be uh, just running through each one of these these particular things. So the ones with slightly darker gray background, you're just going to type in which gem. Make sure this shows up. Make sure that when you type this in, something similar to this shows up. And then you're just going to more or less just run through all of these things. Uh, stop here at install git using homebrew and then John uh, call me on slack Again, if you're feeling overwhelmed, that's totally normal I'm calling call you right now John
So let's see what else. So we've gotten to this particular point. We're gonna use, we're gonna install Git using Homebrew. So Git comes built into your computer. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, I'm not the only one that has this. Uh, I just, I just I read, does uh, override the executable? Yes or no? Yes. Says it, yes, yes. Okay. Okay. Yes, why? Yeah. Why and then okay. Have a picture of everything before and after lunch. We'll do it after lunch. Okay. Take for sure. Okay. Oh, you didn't do the second part. What I'm trying to do is set this uh, Are you not on the GD version to two point two point seven. So it should be good. I have an issue too. I did both of ours sometimes for the sport when you had to go on me and the ice one. Yes. Two point five. Point oh. Well, it's me. No, I don't think about it. I know. You just can't be used to this feeling. This is going to keep happening. All right, so don't worry about it. You were uh, your neighbor. Okay. Yeah. For Army, you understand. We're the retards to get the directions on step by step. You good? I think I'm. I think I'm good. I'm you not, think you're good? I'm not confident. <laughs> but I think I'm good. Just wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, Army, this could take a while. Yeah, installing the new version of Ruby takes a long time. Okay. Thanks, Rehash. Oh, here. It's going to take. Okay. I just installed the gems and the git stuff. Should I do that? Okay. <laughs> All right, John, let's see if this works. Try one more time, John.
Sean, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Not, I'm not able to control your screen. Uh, let's see here. Try now. Hey John. Yep. Yep. Can you put a uh, tilde here? A what? A tilde. It's a uh, the squiggly thing underneath the escape button. Yeah. John, let's do this. I'm gonna have to do this. I'm gonna have to do all of it. I'm gonna do all of it at lunch. Okay. So we'll we'll, we'll talk offline. Okay. Yeah. Right. So that's that, like that's the most. Once you're done with your setup, once you're done with everything, um, and everything looks good. You can go ahead and take lunch. Um, we'll be back at 1.45. Uh, who is completely stuck? I'm not completely I'm Not the, the cash in my GitHub. Um, Josh, do you have experience with that or no? Uh, I can help. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, okay. Let's see. So for uh, John and for Jackie, I'm going to so stop recording and stop the um, video I, here. Um, and then I'm going to call each one of you individually just to make sure everything's running okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, no worries.